Hi, and welcome to Live at the Landmark Shark Tank. I'm Paige Sterling. And I'm Nolan Brown. For more than 30 years, Landmark College has been the leader for teaching successful strategies to students with learning disabilities. Landmark College started in 1985 as the first school aimed at college-level dyslexic students. Now the school branched out to help more students with different disabilities, empowering and encouraging students to become confident learners who know they can succeed. Landmark not only assists students to learn about themselves and what they need to do well, but how to ask for help and how to believe in themselves. This is the Landmark difference. Landmark College, helping those who learn differently. We want to feature some people at Landmark College. First, we start with Barbara Young. This coming June marks 18 years since Barbara Young began working at Landmark College as part of the facilities team for Aiken and Frost Hall. Young believes that Landmark College is ever-changing, but her feelings towards the students have stayed the same. She stated that being able to interact with the students is the greatest benefit of her job, even if it means catching up later that day on her work. While speaking with Young, it's easy to hear the love that she has for the students in her voice. For that reason, she doesn't like when they go on vacation because the buildings get so lonely. Barbara has been a resident of Vermont her entire life and has been married for 38 years. She has three sons, ages 37, 34, and 30. Outside of Landmark, Young enjoys spending time with her horses, her greatest passion. Young counts herself extremely lucky that after 18 years, she still loves coming to work every day. Another person at Landmark, Senior Technical Support Specialist Maria Nespolo's typical day at Landmark. Landmark's IT help desk involves removing spyware and viruses. The most common problem seen by the help desk is bad hard drives. These are caused by college students leaving their laptop computers on before putting them away in their bags. She says that the problems with gaming and torrenting are less of a problem today because the bandwidth speed has increased to 600 megabytes a second. With this increase comes a decrease in the complaints of network speed. Ms. Nespolo says that the best part of her job is that there's always more to learn. However, she does not like it when students come in and are unhappy and, and have a negative attitude because their stuff is broken. And now we go to Chrissy and Carol Ann for news on landmark events. This past Friday evening, resident dean John Alig and resident assistant Nolan Brown headed out into the cold outdoors to start a fire for students living on campus outside of Hall 4 at Lamar College. The two lit up a fire pit to encourage students to come out and socialize. The fire remained lit for an hour and a half and enjoyed by approximately five students and put out around 9.30 at night. The residential life staff plans to continue incorporating social events into January term. Lamar College's student trip to Sky Zone Trampoline Park was supposed to be this weekend's big event. However, due to icy roads and heavy rain, the outing was canceled. Students could get a refund or use the prepaid money for next weekend's snow tubing trip. Many students were disappointed, but they are excited for the tubing trip. Dana Roberts, the driver, made a smart and safe decision and kept the students out of harm's way. Way to go, Dana! Carolyn and I interviewed Abigail Nelson, Director of Transfer Services. When asked questions about her role at Landmark and at past colleges, Abigail says she has helped students to plan their next steps. Nelson and the transfer team work to plan events and workshops for the students. She came to Landmark in July with a lot of experience under her belt. Nelson lived in New York and worked in academic affairs as Director of Disability Initiatives at New York City University where she worked with students with disabilities to reach their goals, as well as conduct research and career counseling. Part of her background is with vocational rehab and in the counseling and disability field. Landmark College had been on Nelson's radar since she visited. Abigail has always been interested in psychology and helping people with disabilities to reach their goals. When comparing Landmark to other colleges, she says that students here come into her office with more self-knowledge. And she says that compared to other schools, not just one person understands learning disabilities. Everyone does. Abigail's favorite part of her job is working one-to-one -one with students. The most challenging part is to find time to plan new things with the transfer team. Abigail lives in Putney with her husband. She likes to explore the outdoors, run, and try adventurous activities. In addition, Abigail likes to research and try different restaurants and describes herself as a food lover. Another Landmark staff member, Tiffany Kerrylow, was hired as executive assistant to the president at Landmark College in September 2013. Kerrylow went into the job expecting a very typical secretary job, but it has been far better than she expected. 
She has developed a great rapport with Dr. Peter Eden. She describes Dr. Eden as very smart, experienced, and was initially worried she wouldn't be able to engage in conversations with him. She expressed gratitude for how understanding Dr. Eden is when she has questions and how great he is with giving assistance. Carrie Lowe shared she has had opportunities to meet many of the great staff and faculty, whom she also described as wise and accommodating. She has been particularly impressed with how innovative and advanced the college is technologically, and shared that she herself uses the LiveScribe pen as many students use. When asked about what she thinks of Landmark students, she said that she doesn't think Landmark students are very different than any other college, except they are all united with one commonality. She believes the campus offers a lot of opportunities in this respect because the faculty and staff try to make this school about college, not just focus on learning differences. Now let's hear stories from Johnny Hayes and Emily Carey about Landmark's international students and the history of its mascot. Here at Landmark College, there aren't many international students, so for those who are, it feels strange in many ways. To help out, last semester there was a luncheon for international students held by Peg Alden, Director of International Studies. Dr. Alden approached Saranella and asked her to be a part of a committee called LIST, Landmark International Student Team. This was a big moment for Saranella because as the first person to be invited to the committee, she felt very important. At the LIST committee meetings, there are several important administrators and Saranella, the only student. The committee will talk about what they can do to make international students feel more welcomed. Saranella is enthusiastic about this and has many ideas that she can share with the rest of the committee. Ever wonder why there is a shark as a, the mascot for a landlocked college? A popular Saturday Night Live skit from the 70s called Land Sharks created the idea for the mascot. It was chosen through a student contest when Landmark's new president, Peter Eden, came up about two years ago. Oh, he wanted to change. The mascot changed the, from the land shark to simply a shark, and a contest was held to name the mascot. The winning name was Finn. Do you ever find out who a mascot really is? Well, Landmark's own mascot, Finn the Shark, is pretty secretive about its true identity. In fact, being a shark is not what many students think. Trust me, I've been in there. I've been in Finn since coming to Landmark in 2011. It gets pretty hot inside the costume, but once you're in there more often, you become used to the heat. Finn is usually at the Landmark events like Fall Fest, Family Day, Family Weekend, Shark Day, many basketball games, and Spring Fling. He appeared in two baseball games so far. Now that I have graduated in December, it's your turn to take over. If you want to be Finn, come try out and hopefully you could be the man or woman inside the shark. Now here's Paige Sterling with our RAs, Nolan Brown and Emily Carey. A resident assistant or RA is someone who keeps all the gears intact in helping a college environment run smoothly. Landmark College has a number of RAs that play an important role in helping the campus. An RA is someone who is a role model and enjoys giving back to the community. Being objective and having a sound moral compass is also important. They help keep the people on track and assist different interpersonal problems. An RA should not only be an enforcer, they should be a friend whenever a student is in need of comfort or advice. Emily, what is one of the reasons that you decided to become an RA? Um, I think one a big deciding factor in me becoming an RA was I wanted to be a bigger part of the community I live in and um, contribute to making it as positive as it can be. Nolan, what are some of the benefits of being an RA? Um, I think some of the benefits are, uh, you know, you become, as, as Emily just said, you become part, more part of the community and it's nice to do that. Um, you meet people that you otherwise may have not met and of course, it's nice to get a paycheck every two weeks. So. Does it affect your personal life at all, Emily? Um, I'd say it, you know, it could take time out of my personal life. Um, but I think, on another hand, it definitely um, helps you increase your ability to be responsible and assertive and confident in your own life. What are some of the typical challenges of being an RA? Dealing with, with situations you, know, you may not want to deal with at that exact moment. Um, being objective with all the people you deal with, which is really hard to do. Um, making sure that you don't, you know, show any favoritism or anything like that. Oh, spending weekends definitely when you when you have time to do other stuff. Oh, well, weekend. actually, you don't have time to do other stuff because 
you have to be on from, I think, eight hours a day on the weekends and then until one in the morning, so. Do your friends, like, challenge. is it hard for your friends to understand that at all? No, I mean, I think they understand that why we took the job and, and the different responsibilities that come with it, so. Have you ever ha been in, like, a really tough situation before? Like, I know you can't talk about it, but, like, did you have, like, one favorite situation that you've had? Um, I think every situation has its own unique challenges, and um, our resident deans are always there to be supportive and really help us navigate those situations if there's ever an occurrence where we don't know how to handle it. You're both in Aiken Hall, right? Is there a reason that you chose Aiken or compared to any other hall? We're assigned. Yeah, we're assigned halls. halls. But I would say, I might say Aiken's, you know, it's definitely really comfortable there. And uh, I wouldn't change where I would want to work because I love my boss. Me too. He's a great guy. That's really fun. I'm glad you guys seem to enjoy your job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This has been live in the Landmark Shark Tank with I'm Paige Sterling. And this is Emily and Nolan, and that's all we have for today. Stay warm, Brattleboro. This has been brought to you by the Landmark Broadcasters Journalism Class. <laughs>